Hey, labial legends. Before we get stuck into this epi, I wanted to tell you about my new online course that's about to go live and also give you a heads up that I sound like I've been deep throating a rhino dick because I've lost my voice. So be prepared for these husky tones to serenade you through the next hour. (laughs) But if you haven't already signed up for Queen Out, you've only got a couple more days to cash in on the whopper of a discount that I'm giving to the trailblazers who jump on board for this first round of the pilot. So I'm offering my new three-month course at half price right now to celebrate its inaugural launch. And if you want to get serious about taking your sex life into your own hands and going on a deep dive with me to feel more sexually empowered, confident, knowledgeable, and orgasmic than ever before, now is the time. This is your sign. This is your call to action. This course will never again be offered at this price with 50% off. And it's a culmination of my years of experience in this field with all my best material in the one place. So I know you're going to get loads out of it and see results in your life if you join me on this adventure. So anyway, I'm super excited about it if you can't tell. And yeah, I can't bloody wait to connect with you in the course, hopefully. So I'll pop the link and the discount code in the show notes for you and let you get into the episode now. This program is brought to you by Pussy Magnets. Welcome, welcome, my lovely lumps. Or should I say lovely labs? I'm so thrilled to have you here in the Labia Lounge to yarn about all things sexuality, womanhood, holistic health, and everything in between. Your legs. (laughs) Ah, can never help myself. Anyway, we're going to have vag loads of real chats with real people about real shit. So buckle up, you're about to receive the sex ed that you never had and have a bloody good laugh while you're at it. Before we get stuck in, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this, the Manang people. It's an absolute privilege to be living and creating dope podcast content on Noongar country, and I pay respect to their elders past, present, and emerging. Now, if you're all ready, let's flap and do this. <laughs> oh God, is there such thing as too many vagina jokes in the one intro? <laughs> Whatever, I'm leaving it in. It's my podcast. Don't panic, you're not broken. Your sex education was a piece of shit. Get your flaps out and pull up a couch. It's the Labia Lounge. Hello, my labial loves. Welcome back to what I know is going to be a total ripper of an episode because we're talking about butt (laughs) stuff today. I have the lovely Mangala Holland with me to chat about all things anal because we all want to know, right? Um, And Mangala and I actually did a really incredible episode already together where we busted neo-tantric myths. Uh, We talked about the abuse of power and sexual seediness that goes on in some of those tantra or neo-tantra communities and we just generally had really amazing chats so definitely go back and check that one out if you haven't already but on that episode Mangala also mentioned that she used to run workshops on anal play called the was back, it door back, back door to god back door to god Oh, which I just had to have her back on to tell me about. Um, So welcome back, Mangala. You are the first return guest to the Labia Lounge so far. Wow, what an honour and a privilege. I'm delighted to be back with you and and with your audience. Yeah, thank you for having me on again. Oh, pleasure. What an OG labial legend. Um, All right, so first things first. I would love to hear about your relationship to your anus and how and why did you wind up teaching people about butt stuff all those years ago? Like, give me a bit of background, a bit of context. Yeah, I, it was something that I hadn't really explored until, like, not not in my 20s, not in my 30s. And it was, yeah, I was in my early 40s and I was in a Neo Tantra environment um, overseas, which the whole environment there was very problematic, and I think we covered more of that in the last the last interview. But in <laughs> that um, in that environment, I was explore- really diving deep into my sexuality and sexual healing, and and really wanting to explore 
openly, you know, as much of myself as I could. And it became this natural thing that I started exploring. I'm even trying to remember now which which partner it was, but I think that there was one partner in particular where we started to really explore this stuff. And it, it felt really beautiful to explore it. And I had some incredible breakthroughs and real deep openings. And it was and at the same time I recognized how it really needed to be done with care and slowness and preparation and all of these things. Um, and nobody in that environment was really even talking about it, let alone teaching it. And because I was having all these amazing experiences mm -hmm. and, and a lot of energy moving and like, it's like, how can you be talking about cervical orgasms and all this other stuff when like, this is equally as profound and it's just not being touched upon mm. and and a lot of the inner work I was doing on myself was was about clearing my shame and really trying to release a lot of the shame that I'd grown up with and and sexual shame that I had and and I realized that this, this was kind of like the last frontier of that it is like it because it's such an intimate space <laughs> to explore and because you know the butt stuff has these connotations with poop and with if we think like if we think in energetic terms if you believe in chakras like like the anus and that area is the root chakra and what do we hold in that area well it's this is foundation this is safety but it's also guilt it's also shame so all of that is deeply held there and it's and it also just felt like such an incredible mm. uh, the whole thing just felt so incredible to me and i didn't have just positive experiences either i had some very negative experiences including boundary violations and that made me realize mm. about all the peer pressure i'd had in my younger life of of men trying to go there when i wasn't ready or you know trying to pressure me into mm. it um that it was a bit of a fashion and they wanted to be the first to do it and all this kind of stuff um so there was a whole lot in there that I really wanted to bring this to light and talk about because it, it hadn't been talked about in that community or elsewhere really that I'd seen and um me being a um, just mm -hmm. say as it is kind of person and just being out there and speaking yeah, <laughs> it, it it created a bit of a wave <laughs> so that is the short answer totally <laughs> yeah wow and I mean with a name like backdoor to god I can imagine the wave being pretty controversial <laughs> for some folk okay. um yeah what a stigmatized and taboo topic like you're saying like it's associated with poo it's like sometimes I hear people saying things like oh like you know, it's gross, it's dirty, poo, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, a common one I hear is, oh, it seems really unnatural for something to go in a hole that's di designed for stuff to come mm -hmm. out, you know. So, like, what are some of the, I guess, like, barriers um, or the uh, misconceptions that you came up against with this work? Mm. Oh, that's a good, yeah. I mean, those are really, really good ones. Like, unnatural. And of course, because I'd called it Backdoor to God, um, which was a name somebody else came up with when we were just talking <laughs> about it. And I just thought, oh my God, that's brilliant. But of course, then there was a lot of religious pushback as well from certain certain members of society um, um yeah. and i i was only advertising this work in thailand as a workshop but i was getting responses from all over the world on the internet it really kind of went wild i was oh my god um including where the the place where i was hosting this workshop uh the the guy who owned that space was a good friend of mine but his parents were also in the area and they are really strong catholics and so you know you can imagine the kind of <laughs> kind of response that it that they they yeah. weren't happy um so there is a lot of religious it's it's kind of like there's a lot of religious unspoken stuff about this about how it's wrong it's dirty it's shameful this is only for um you know it's only if you're really slutty and you wouldn't even consider it otherwise you know there's a lot of that kind of 
um, misconceptions around it. And that is, and if we're talking like heterosexual relationships, it's interesting because that that pushback only ever seems to get directed at women. I don't see any mm. men being told they're shameful or dirty for for penetrating someone in the anus, you know, I, unless you start to, I think there's also the, yeah. it's, it's also equated with, you know, the, the queer community as well. Mm. And I think that ties in with the conservatism and the religious fundamentalism and that kind of stuff that it's, there is that kind of side to it, but within straight male circles in general, I don't hear it's, it's more of a, yay, all right, well done lads kind of thing that you're more likely to hear down the pub rather pub. than, Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Totally. And then if you flip yeah. it, though, I think there's a lot of, you know, sort of homophobic, like men don't want to admit that they like things yeah. in their anus or they don't want to try it because that's, you know, like that's shameful or that's like, oh, no homo, though, you yeah. know, um, or they're scared they'll like it and what does that mean? Yeah. Or, um, yeah. And it's really interesting because when I taught the workshop in Thailand, I was in this very dogmatic tantric community that was very, very like incredibly heterosexual and quite homophobic. And so it was all one way, you know. And then when I moved to Melbourne and I taught I taught a couple of workshops there, it was very different. And everyone was like, Can you can we talk about pegging? And you know, and it was a much more um it was a much more <laughs> equal, balanced conversation which was really exciting for mm. me that it's like you know this isn't just a one-way thing um yeah, yeah. yeah. wow yeah amazing it um, reminds me of my probably the first experience I had with any sort of anal stuff was in a neo-tantric training where we were learning how to do a, a sacred spot massage mm -hmm. on on um one another. So for me, that meant working with a male and uh, prostate massage or anal de mm -hmm. Um, And I was shit scared. I was just like so, so, so new to all that work. I was totally terrified. But it was a very, very beautiful, um, vulnerable experience. I know the man that I was partnered up with for that exercise had a really um, profound experience. I think he had some tears come and some releases and it was actually such a beautiful and um, powerful potent thing for you know a man to receive and be yeah. penetrated so I'd love yeah you to just talk a little bit on that just for anyone that might think that this is not for everyone and that yeah. everyone couldn't benefit it's you know yeah yeah and that's it and when I back in the day where I was doing body work I would get asked occasionally to do prostate massage and I, I did do some training in it and I found that was in my early days that was one of the the stepping stones into like seeing wow the potential of this is like incredible and particularly you know if you think about like something like that where it's done really slowly and there's a full body massage first and and as you were saying just just I was guided in that training to realize how slow you need to go and how unlike the vaginal canal the the anus isn't self-lubricating so you need to whatever you're doing there needs to be a lot of lubrication you need to go slowly it's like really incremental um and it was really valuable for me to see that and recognize it because i think you know for some people would have like the most incredible experiences and i'd only go up to like the first knuckle with one finger and that's all they needed <laughs> you know and it's mm. it's uh giving people a space to fully receive and let go and surrender which for many straight men is not something they've had the conditioning around to be able to step into it's hard for many of us mm. to relax and surrender at the best of times but particularly for straight mm. straight dudes that have not been socialized in that way it, it's incredible to see the breakthroughs um that these guys mm. would have and so it's not just about you know, shoving in a, a massive cock or a dildo, it's, it's, it really does require this slowness and nuance. And that taught me so much about my own body as well, you know, because this is, this is also mm. the same as a recipient in learning how slow I needed to direct my partners into this mm. and how slow they needed to go and needed to be educated in rather than just trying to ram it in because it shouldn't, 
hurt. Mm. This is a misconception big yeah. time. It yeah. should not hurt if you're doing it right. Mm. Yeah, amazing. I think it's so valuable for someone, like uh, I guess especially in a heterodynamic, for the male in that equation just to experience what it's like to be penetrated and to be on the receptive end because – Mm-hmm. then they it, that would inform how they go about then penetrating others you know i feel like a lot of the time it's tricky for men to understand just how slow they need to go or how careful and how consciously they need to be approaching penetration what a massive responsibility that is what a gift you know how vulnerable that is for the person who's receiving them like it's really invaluable to have the experience of both giving and receiving penetration Totally, totally. And I think this is really, you know, and also I just want knowledge. It's, it's not for everybody. There's some people who just like, this is absolutely not my thing. I don't want to go there. Whatever your gender, totally fine. But I do think there is, I have really seen huge shifts in awareness around men who have received, like afterwards, they're like, oh, mm. now I get it a little bit more. Um <laughs> You know, rather than just thrust, thrusting in with a jackhammer and hoping for the best, it's like, oh shit, I get it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's a vulnerable space to receive. Yeah, mm, yeah, totally. Mm. And those 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 guys have often been the better lovers as well. Yeah, yeah, I completely they agree. Have that understanding. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, other than, I mean. Obviously, the most uh, obviously the most obvious reason why people might explore anal stuff is pleasure, um, or the mm-hmm. eroticism of doing butt stuff. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what are some of the benefits or the uh, advantages? You know, the reasons why it's good for you, like not just pleasure, but like what are some of the advantages of exploring this? And like also very much appreciate you acknowledging it's not for everyone. It's just, it's not for everyone. That is okay. Um, But yeah, what are some of the reasons why it's good for you? What are the benefits and maybe why someone might want to explore it if they haven't, if they haven't been open to it in the past? Yeah. Well, I think pleasure is a massive one, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's even just exploring around the anal entrance, if you're going really slow, just with a fingertip, maybe in the bath mm. where you feel clean, you know, there can be yeah. um, that. It, it, there is a lot of pleasure in those. In those, there's a lot of nerve endings there, um, and it can feel incredibly pleasurable. There's also something about opening in that way that is very, very liberating. Um, and I'm thinking back to um, the, I, some of you listening to this might have come across uh, an educator called Ellen Heed. She's done a lot of body work. She does a lot mm-hmm. of somatic work, a lot of nervous system work, and she also does a lot of work with scar tissue remediation. Mm. And I remember a quote from her where she said that the anus is the royal gateway to the nervous system. Mm. So there is a lot of deep unwinding of tension and relaxation that is possible in this area like like nothing else I've been able to tap into um, and then on an emotional level and on an energetic level I have had some of the most profound experiences where it's just felt like it's completely lightened the load like whatever heavy stuff I've been carrying it just goes and, and I've been left feeling like I'm floating on air it's it's mm. really incredible and uplifting I would say and that I'll give you an example of this like because you know a lot of people as we're talking about this stuff might be thinking of full penetration but during the first the first lockdown <laughs> I mean yeah. you know in 2020 and yeah. I, got stuck in Melbourne for six months longer than I expected and we were all locked down and it was really intense and felt like the world was falling apart and I needed I needed to like draw on all my tools and my skills to be able to move through the stuff I was personally moving through and I found that something that really worked for me was for for about two weeks 
just as before going to, to sleep, I would just explore the entrance to my anus with just a fingertip, just a part of my finger, just around the entrance for half an hour every night. And just what mm. I felt drop away, what I felt my jaw loosen, I felt I felt all this stress and tension literally melt out of my body because I, I felt like, oh, God, I'm really, you know, we talk about being anally retentive, for example, or uptight. It's like, or someone's walking around with a stick in their ass. You know, we have mm. these, yeah. we know what that means. It, those, those phrases give us an indication of the tension that we can hold in our body. And just just exploring that really gently with no goal of going inside or just exploring the entrance and seeing what wanted to relax and soften was so profound and so incredible and for anybody listening to this if you've not experienced or even if you have then this is something you you might want to explore just as a a baby Mm. step to moving towards it but I think it's a it's good maintenance to do it now and again. Mm. You know, if you're finding that you need to you need to let, let off some stress and nothing else is quite hitting the spot and your normal your normal movement practices or yoga or dance are not quite doing it, it's a there's a deeper unwinding there. And I'm sure there's mm. lots of very physiological reasons for that that I am not um, versed in to be able to explain <laughs> the science behind it, but. You know, it, it, it worked for me uh, yeah. and it's worked for a lot of other people that, mm. that I know. So, mm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard similar anecdotes and it does, I'm sure there's way more scientific ways of explaining it, but one that pops to mind is like the sphincters in our bodies are all kind of connected in a yes. way where they reflect one another's states. So, you know, like the throat and the mouth yeah. and the jaw can hold tension that will be reflected in the pelvic bowl. The anus is a sphincter. So it yeah. makes sense that if you, yeah. you know, tap into a relaxation in that place, it can unwind other parts of the body and the nervous system. It's also such a deeply vulnerable spot that no one's no one's gently caressing your asshole unless you are in a safe well I mean uh, yeah. other than in an abusive hopefully. situation hopefully hopefully um yeah, yeah it's like you're you're hopefully yeah. not in fight or flight if you're able to be present with the sensation of gentle pressure on your anus and that therefore informs the brain oh this must be a deeply safe uh situation otherwise I wouldn't be able to be focused on that I would be you know running or fighting or thinking about you know so um you know in that situation where you're just with yourself or you're with a partner or a loved one you feel really safe with I can imagine how restorative and yeah deeply soothing it could be especially because if you are comfortable or you're becoming comfortable with being touched or touching yourself in an area that can hold so much shame so much um you know stigma around being filthy or shameful that in itself is like dismantling the shame you know giving it some attention some loving touch some presence being comfortable or moving towards being comfortable with touch in that area like would automatically be quite a healing and reassuring sort of space, right? Totally. And, you know, you touched on something really important there about the sphincter because there is, um, if I remember rightly, there's there's two sphincters. There's a, mm-hmm. there's a voluntary one and an inv- mm. involuntary one. And so the voluntary one is where we're able to hold in poop mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's that yeah. we're able to we're able to hold things in and then the involuntary one is the part of the body that says no nope. so the walls are shut the, the door is shut you are not coming in without force you know so this is where that relaxation is so 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 mm-hmm. absolutely important and why it needs a lot of preparation and a lot of care and as you say safety and that being with somebody you trust if you're exploring this mm-hmm. with somebody else is Eighty percent of it, you know, really, really is. Mm. Um, absolutely, yeah, yeah, amazing. Because the the feeling of when when something goes in, as we know with trauma, if someone goes in too fast, too hard, too soon, too much, mm. the whole body just says, "Yeah, no, yeah. you know, we'll free go into freeze or fight or flight." Yeah, so, yeah, and then you yeah, get pain and, and contraction. That is more obvious. Yeah, and that's mm. much more obvious than it is in the vagina, mm. where yeah. particularly if we've been conditioned into 
pleasing partners or overriding our own signals or we're just not aware of what a yes or a no is, it's easier to still let things happen in the yeah. in the vagina and the vulva mm-hmm. than it is in the anus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cannot get away with anything unless there is such a deep state of relaxation and trust. Um, and I've definitely, definitely attempted um, when I haven't been relaxed enough and it's just automatic like pain, micro tears, yeah. closed door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even sometimes it's one of those things sometimes as well. I've had it myself where I felt super aroused and I, I I think it, it it's best to explore it if you're already super mm-hmm. aroused, especially if you're aiming for, for penetration with a partner. But I've had experiences where I've been super aroused and thought, yeah, let's go for it. And the body just says no. And mm. I'm so, oh, okay, not today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I guess that sort of brings me to, yeah, speaking a bit about uh, what are some of the important things to keep in mind when we're starting to approach this and ease ourselves into it? Like obviously arousal is pretty essential um, because the amount of pleasure yeah. we're going to feel from the anus if we're not already aroused is diminished and also the amount of openness and relaxation. So like if someone's beginning at mm-hmm. anal play, where would you suggest they start and what are some important uh, you know, beginner steps and tips and tricks? Hey, babe towns. So sorry to interrupt, but I simply had to pop my head into the lounge here and mention another virtual lounge that you've got to get around. It's the Labia Lounge Facebook group that I've created for listeners of the potty to mingle in. And there you'll find extra bits and bobs like freebies or discounts for offerings from guests who've been interviewed on the podcast, inspiring and thought-provoking conversations, and support from a community of labial legends. I also have an account on the fab new app Sunroom, which is a platform created by women for women and non-binary folk, and where there's no shadow banning or censorship of sex-positive content unlike with the other platforms that I'm on. So you can hit up my sunroom for extra content and real and raw life updates because I'll be sharing on there from now on all of the stuff that I can't post anywhere else. My vision for both of these is that they become really supportive, educational and hilarious resources for you to have more access to me and a safe space to ask questions that you can't ask anywhere else. So head over to the links in the show notes and I'll hopefully see you in there. And now back to the episode. Yeah. So first of all, I would start with fingers and small things yep. <laughs> first. Um, I would start with start with a finger, then then move to you know if that feels good, then move to a butt plug, and mm-hmm. if that feels good, then explore. You know, if you're going to use a dildo or a penis or something like that, uh, but start start small and work your way up. And the other th- thing that's so so important is lubrication. Mm-hmm. Like absolutely, like just get a good quality lube and and use absolutely loads. Of it. <laughs> you just really do. I think the other thing that can feel really good is to put. It sounds it might sound obvious, but just put a towel down beforehand so that you can relax a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But if there is any mess, then it's going to go on a towel. It's not the yeah. end of the world. You're not going to ruin your sheets. Yeah. You know, just 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 to take that emotional thing mm. off the table. Um, I know some people do like to do enemas and things first. You know, just to feel that they've cleaned out. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's I think that's an individual choice um, because sometimes if you do too much of that, it can feel like you're stripping away any natural um, lubrication that's there and and Mm. might leave you feeling too dry, which might lead to micro tears, as you you mentioned. So just lots of lube and go slow. Like this is one of those places where slow the fuck down, Mm. like more than anything is, is the way forward, you know, and, do it incrementally. So if you're starting with a finger, just maybe get to the first, you know, can you go up to the first knuckle? Or even first, but before that, just to rewind, I would just start at the entrance and with one finger just at the entrance, just moving up, down, side to side, and just do that for a while and just get used to exploring the entrance and see where there's tension, see where it's relaxed and start to get used to that and then start to move to a more circular 
small circular motion so things mm. start to gently relax and open a little bit more and mm. then if you're exploring with a finger then just maybe go to the first first knuckle and stop and breathe and relax and allow the rest of your body to relax around it and then if it feels good to go a bit further same again mm. and then if it feels good to go a bit further same again and um, it's and also this kind of in out movement doesn't feel good um it can feel nicer just to be still or to do an up a straight up down with your finger flat mm. so it, it's really it it also requires a lot a lot a lot of communication mm. if you're if you're engaging with this with with somebody else and really you know being able to not just say stop but you know to really fine tune this like yeah that's still good okay yes keep going and constantly checking in are you sure are you how's that feeling what are you feeling mm. would you like to go slower how does how's that pressure you know let's just pause here and catch up like really just taking time mm. i think is so important yeah beautiful um when it yeah and when it comes to like if you are going to go further and you want to explore being penetrated with a cock or a dildo um or something else <laughs> um <laughs> then if if you're a vulva owner i would recommend that you enjoy some vaginal sex first so that you are open aroused already pleasured and so it's a natural flow on like don't try and do this from cold ground zero mm. like make sure you're already in the flow and if it feels like a spontaneous thing or you've discussed it and it's like yeah it feels good then this is a an opportunity to to, to explore then shifting into it um i think that's really important mm. and you know this you often hear the joke of just the tip is <laughs> yeah. just the tip um, gets rounded around a bit, but you know, it could be just just resting the tip there for a while and and just see if your if your breath can soften, if your belly can relax, if the rest of your body can invite inner relaxation. Does this feel good? So that you feel like there's an opportunity here as a vulva owner to take, although you're being penetrated and it is a very very profoundly deep surrender in many ways you can also be in charge of that by how much you you take in and how much you allowing your partner to be still and you being the one to decide how much you can mm. move on to them how much you can take in how much you can you know that that can be a much much more pleasurable way to to go about it actually mm, yeah totally you know using your hand to guide their hand or their cock or the dildo like sort of backing yeah. up onto them or yeah. just verbally sort of saying yep Definitely. go another couple of millimeters yeah. stop yep because yeah it really is important that you do especially if you're starting out and a bit nervous or you know I mean, on a number of reasons, it's great to feel in control. I think to feel in control, then you can fully surrender totally. And it sounds kind of, you know, yeah. it's a bit of a, um, uh, what do you call it, juxtaposition or whatever. But it is, yeah, important to feel as though you are in control so that you can completely surrender and relax into it. And um, I also was sort of yeah. thinking um, you mentioned uh, – it's important to maybe have vaginal sex or just something else that's going to get you really aroused and open and in the mood. So would you recommend while, you know, with a finger or a dildo or whatever, while that's slowly approaching the anus to also have another hand maybe on the clitoris or on the cock, like just arousing yourself in other yeah. ways that are already quite familiar and you know work and doing it at, at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if something's working, something works for you, do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if something feels good, do it and say yes to it. That's always my my um my philosophy. And it, it can be, you know, like one of the one of the most pleasurable things to explore as you're if you're new to this is while you're being 
pleasured or penetrated if, with vaginal sex is just to have one finger exploring either your finger or their finger exploring the anus very gently mm. can wow it can bring so much um pleasure and energy and and it can really help bring everything right down so that you're not flying off in the clouds but it can really bring your awareness and your attention and your your focus down more so you're more aware of like everything mm feeling good if it's done in the right way mm. it can be you know that can be a really a good inroad so it doesn't feel like right we're doing this and then we're stopping that and then we're doing that yeah. you know it's not so clunky it's like a more of a more playful mm. more uh more enjoyable yeah mm. and sensual yeah. Mm, yeah yeah gorgeous amazing well I know in our last episode we already did the get pregnant and die segment and the TMI but I would love to milk another TMI story out of you if you've got one it doesn't have to be related to butt stuff oh. but it could be <laughs> oh let me think um well I guess on the TMI and just as another hot tip. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> because um because when it comes to poop, sometimes there will be a bit of poop. There won't always be, but sometimes there might be. And one of the best things I can suggest is having a laugh about it and showering off together mm. in the shower afterwards and you know, not making a deal yeah. out of it. Yeah. That is that is sort of the best the best thing I can suggest there, um, and you know then if there's a bit of sweet corn or something, you can <laughs> you know, that might be the your your own personal TMI moment or you know um, I remember with one lover I don't know if this was a TMI from last time I can't remember but I remember one lover he pulled out and we'd been doing a lot of this anal sex it was amazing and I think he was one of the inspirations for me teaching this because I was having such a, a great time um but he pulled out one day he was like why is this green and I'm like um spirulina <laughs> I've just been having a lot of green smoothies and stuff so <laughs> you know it's just to be able to have a sense of humor about this yeah. stuff and just keep it mm. real is I think is really, really important. yeah yeah um because these are the last these are the you know if you can laugh about that then what this just sh shame can't be held in yeah. your body you know yeah. it, it is liberating in that way it's like oh fuck it life's too short totally. <laughs> if I enjoy this I'm gonna make the most of it and it doesn't matter uh, you know? yeah I think there's a lot of there's a lot of freedom that can come mm. from absolutely it. I've I've always um got this expression I'm always saying because I'm a total grot and I like always spill food on my clothes so I can't wear white but I um I say life's too short to keep your whites white and in the context of that conversation it's even funny <laughs> um but I love that you mentioned that. I love that you mentioned laying a towel down for peace of mind because that is such a barrier. Like, like personally, and from speaking to a lot of people, that's probably the main thing that you know I've worried about. Um, and you know, I know people might religiously douche beforehand, or like laying a towel down can be great just so that you. Um, can kind of just like forget about it and be like, okay, well, at least that's covered. But I guess also just the the trust and feeling of safety with a partner means that it's not the end of the world. You're not going to be mortified if something happens. And the fact that like sex and bodies are funny and they can be gross. They can be, they, yeah. we have all sorts of fluids coming out of us. Like it's going to happen, you know, there's going to be yeah. times where some, like farts, you know, like fanny farts. <laughs> I've heard like yeah. it, it's it's all happened yeah. to everyone like it you know it doesn't have to be this yeah. totally like um you know hiding your head in your hands like mortifying moment and I think like the more we can speak about it um and normalize that the better so love that <laughs> that spirulina anecdote hilarious yeah, there was something else that came into my yeah. There was something that came into my brain when you were just saying that. Um, oh God, what was it? Um, just yeah, just about lightening the load and really. Um, yes, that was it. The other thing to, to minimise the poop mm -hmm. thing as well is just 
cho- choose what time of day you do mm. this, you know. Um, you know your eating patterns. You know your bowel movements. So work around that rather than trying to yeah. do it when you're full or, you're, you know, it's just – yeah. yeah, that's what worked well for, for me and some of my yeah. partners. Some people yeah. eat flaxseed or psyllium husk, we, you know. We found that before lunchtime was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. And yeah. especially if you've got regular bowel movements, you can sort of work it out. And yeah, like I was saying, some people would have a fiber supplement or psyllium husk or flaxseed or something, chia, that they know helps them do a really good mm-hmm. poo and have like a proper evacuation, <laughs> as a doctor would call it, evacuation, full yeah. evacuation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you've you've got a bit of peace of mind. It's less likely to happen. I was also thinking of um, – a question. I don't know if someone asked me this or if I'd had this thought, but what about um, say you've got dick in butt sex and you don't wear a condom? Is is the bacteria from the like fecal matter a worry? Because I know like if bacteria starts going up your urethra, then you're at risk of a UTI. Like, are you supposed to wear condoms when you have anal sex, or is it kind of okay if you just wash off and do a wee afterwards? I would strongly recommend that if after anal that you both shower, wash, like don't go back, mm. don't go back to the to the vaginal mm-hmm. sex. It basically, you don't want that cross mm. cross contamination because that is where you know UTIs and and things can, can mm-hmm. come in. And I know with some partners we've just we've changed condoms part way through and that's you know just have a fresh condom and then that feels that feels good um so it's really working with whatever whatever you would normally do with your partner um and just make sure that the lube you're using is condom Mm -hmm. friendly obviously um and yeah but the cleaner the better in that respect yeah yeah Yeah, i think it's 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 definitely worth Mm. having that Mm, totally yeah definitely the um I'm just so hyper conscious of like if there's ever any butt play involved. I've I've definitely been known to say to my partner, which finger are you using? What are you like? And he's like, it's okay. Like I've got I've got tabs. I've got tabs on which finger I was using for that and which finger I'm using for that. Like it's okay. Like yeah. keep it on separate hands, even just to be safe. Because yeah. like I'm so conscious yeah. of you know yes. cross contamination and. Um, getting things where they shouldn't yeah. go. So definitely yeah. a consideration as well. It might take a little bit yeah. more forethought, a little bit more planning or, you know, effort just to make sure you're doing it in a safe way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 But and all having all of that will give you peace of mind as yeah. well. Yeah. So that you can relax. Totally. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So... If we're if we're thinking about someone who's never tried any anal stuff, maybe there's a little bit of mindset stuff about like, oh, it's a bit gross. I'm a bit self conscious. Um, how long like can it take to sort of start to feel good and get into it? Like, is it um, is it something that's just going to be a little bit awkward and not that pleasurable the first few times for everyone, or are some people going to get really into it straight away? Are some people never going to come around to it? Like, you know, did it take you a little while before you actually started enjoying it in like a pleasurable orgasmic sense? Um, it's a good question. And I think this is such an individual thing and it, it really comes down to, you know, first of all, it's about what about their relationship to pleasure in general and how connected are they, are they to their body mm. and how safe do they feel in the rest of their body mm. and all of those things before even mm. um, exploring this. So it's so individual. Um, but I think just going gently and, and staying still and noticing what you can feel, um, it can wake up very quickly for some people and for other people it's just like oh you know what I've tried this and actually no it's not for me that's also okay um, but it can be very profound and we haven't even actually talked about anal orgasms no <laughs> um, we're getting there so I uh, so I'm going to mention yeah. that now because <laughs> because let's not forget that you know, well, you re- the, one of the reasons you asked is like, why would we do mm. this? Is that the anal orgasms are a thing, um, and wow, can feel yeah. incredible, really incredible, um, and feel like nothing else I've ever had. Like for me, this is where the earth shakes. Like, mm. wow, more than any other orgasmic experience, um, 
it's very, very physical for me, very intense and very, very strong mm. is the only way mm. I, can d- I can describe right. it. Right. And how does it, I guess if you were to compare it with a vaginal orgasm, yeah, how, I mean, I guess you just did describe it, but maybe for someone who hasn't had an anal orgasm, what are they kind of like? How do you know if you had one? Are they sometimes a combination of vag- vaginal and anal or can you just have pure anal orgasms? Yeah, like let's just chat about anal orgasm for a little while. Yeah. Excuse the interruption, my loves, but I'm shamelessly seeking reviews and five-star ratings for the potty because as I'm sure you've noticed by now, It's pretty fab, and the more people who get to hear it, the more people it can help. Reviews and ratings help me curry favour with the algorithmic gods and get suggested to other listeners to check out. Plus, they make me feel really good and appreciated as I continue to pour my heart and soul into creating this baby for you. And I promise I don't maz over them or anything, I mostly just tuck them away for a rainy day when I'm filled with self-doubt and existential dread about being self-employed, which is fairly frequently. (laughs) So you see, leaving a review really does make a difference and it's an easy little act of support that you can take in just a minute or two by either going to Spotify and leaving five stars for the show or writing a written review and leaving five stars over on Apple Podcasts. Choose your poison, or if you're a real overachiever, you could do both. Whoa, now. If you are writing a review, though, just be sure to only use G rated words because, despite the fact that this is a podcast about sexuality, words like sex can be censored and your review won't actually show up. Lame. Anyway, oh, oh, what was that? Oh, you're going to go do it right now while I wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great idea. May as well just quickly click that five star button before we get on with it and, you know, like forget about it and get on with your day. Um, um, oh, I'm hearing them roll in. I'm hearing those five stars. <laughs> oh my God. I make myself cringe. Anyway, uh, thank you much, Lee. You're a total gem and I'll let you get back to the episode now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um it ca- it can be a, it can be a mixture because depending on the position if there's also um if the cock inside is also kind of through is kind of pressuring on so the G spot um you know or, or certain areas inside it can it can it can be a, a different kind of blended orgasm mm-hmm. I guess we could say. Um And it really depends how you experience vaginal orgasms and the different types of orgasms if you do. Um, But for me, for example, the cervical orgasm is a much more light, meditative, psychedelic experience that can go on a long time. Whereas for me with an anal one, it is much more earthy and physical. Um, But at the same time, it feels much more profound and deep. It It feels just so deep and nourishing so it has a very different physical flavor and sensation mm. to say a clitoral orgasm um yeah so it can be it can be so different and of course you could stimulate the clitoris while you're while you're having anal penetration as well so again things can be blended um and and i remember i remember one experience with someone and 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 I was just in this, uh, just having a, a really wild orgasmic time. And he was like, "What is that? Is that G spot? Is that cervix? Is that anus?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's, <laughs> All it's of it. great." And I'm just like, "My brain, there's yeah, there's no way my brain in that experience could map. This mm. is from this area. This is from that. It was just such a full experience. Mm. And this is why I think it's, it's important to, you know, we." to her to focus perhaps more on orgasmic states rather yeah. than where a specific activation yep, is happening. Totally. Yeah, yeah, less important to be yeah. able to if something feels good. Yeah, definitely. exactly. It's yeah. like I mean I'm less interested in analyzing where the orgasm is coming from and what kind of orgasm I just had. If it felt fucking awesome, then mm. I'm happy. <laughs> Uh, yeah exactly (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. um so (laughs) you mentioned positions what are some great positions to be because I think you know when we think of anal sex or butt stuff we sort of probably picture one or two um positions and I think I've seen some some queer sex scenes in movies where I've just been like oh oh my god they're like 
they're in missionary facing each other. I totally thought it always had to be doggy from behind, you know, when they were getting fucked in the ass. Like I remember having that thought. Um, so what are some great positions for um, anal sex that, yeah, that might be great Ooh. to try? <laughs> um, that's a good point. So I think, you know, doggy is the obvious one, but as I'm sure anyone who's got a vulva will know who's listening to this, that even when you're doing vaginal sex with doggy style, that's not always, you know, sometimes that needs more warm up and it can feel a bit full on for to go straight into that and can feel a bit like, mm-hmm. whoa, a bit intense. So yes, it can, it can be doggy style can be great, but I find a bit of more, something a bit softer can be a, better so kind of like still from behind but perhaps sometimes more where you're more leaned forward or almost lying and they're they're a bit mm-hmm. more tilted as well um so that there's a bit of a, a softer penetration that's happening and sometimes mm-hmm. even while they're kind of semi erect and not fully fully hard can be a lot easier to to mm-hmm. start with and then mm-hmm. as they get harder that that can be really nice to explore um being on top is good if you can if you can get the angle right you might need to lean back a little bit more or it might might feel mm-hmm. a little bit different um but that that position gives you a little bit more control um because you're mm-hmm. able to edge down onto them um any position really where you where you can edge down is helpful but missionary as well can be really great for this um you might need to put a bit a cushion or a pillow under your buttocks so mm-hmm. that you've got a bit more tilt in the pelvis um yep. or under the lower back just just make adjustments um because yeah. it's all about access and once you can always shift things up and move around once things are flowing and if you get to a point where you're really enjoying being fully penetrated then you get to and things are getting quite wild then of course you can experiment with different positions and Sometimes mm. then that's where doggy style can feel really good because you, you're you're really able to take that and feel that mm. there's an incredible sense of fullness that that is um, very unique to anal pleasure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, 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 amazing. And so, what about like? Afterwards, I know a couple of my gay friends have um, laughed about how they get just super, super farty and after they've had anal sex, they're just farting like crazy for the next sort of 12 (laughs) hours Um, or, you know, like the kind of poo that you might do afterwards. I don't know. What what are some of the things that can happen that are completely normal after you've had, um, yeah, anal sex? Yeah, that can, it can feel very different for everybody. So I think straight after, as I say, shower together and then just see what happens when you go to the loo and maybe don't trust those farts to be farts in the beginning, <laughs> you know, like straight after. It can be helpful. Like if you just maybe fart on the toilet just to be sure. Yeah. Um, just. <laughs> <Great tip. laughs> Yeah, but it, as I say, it's so different for everybody um, mm. and keep having a sense of humour about it. If there is that, you know, that can be a, yeah. a running joke between you and your partner. And um, Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think what's really important afterwards actually is emotional aftercare and being yeah being together and being tender because it is a vulnerable thing to, to do. Um, and your partner it might be the first time they've done it or they might feel insecure about it or they might be treading on eggshells worrying about hurting you or you know there can be stuff for the giver as well so just really having a good cuddle together afterwards and a debrief Mm. I think this is something we don't do enough of us in our society is having a debrief um, and yeah. sharing how it was, sharing what what you enjoyed, sharing if there are any challenges and what you'd like to try next time or what you'd like to do a little bit differently next time can really help mm. you be on the same page and set you up for success. Yeah. Because mm. to be yeah. – sometimes to be opened that fully – can bring on tears it can bring on emotional releases it can take you to a very a very tender heart space that perhaps you aren't expecting um 
Yeah. And that requires a bit of TLC afterwards. So, yeah. yeah, beautiful. I'm so glad you mentioned that. The aftercare is a really beautiful piece. It's so essential. And I think often we can kind of rush and jump up out of bed or go off and, yeah. and sort of get, get on with our day and yeah, yeah, get all caught up and distracted. But it's it's beautiful to co-regulate again with one another and mm-hmm. yeah, debrief while you're still in that vulnerable space. Um, so yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm, well, what have I missed? What am I? What haven't I asked? I guess, like, I mean, you've sort of peppered throughout what not to do, but is there anything uh, glaringly obvious that we haven't spoken about? Um, what not to do, but also just yeah, little um, little sort of tips for people who are going to go. Okay, I'm going to go off and try this, or I'm going to go take my anal pleasure practice to the next level like yeah is there anything you'd like to just sort of round off yeah there's one it's it's also perhaps a bit more of a tmi as well um i just had a memory pop up of my first butt plug which was a, a soft um probably latex or something that someone someone got for me because I was living in Thailand at the time and sex toys are actually illegal in Thailand so I had to get someone from Australia to bring it over for me oh. and um well it yeah it didn't have a flared base oh no and I lost it inside <laughs> yeah. oh, God. and it was it was it was small as well so I I had a moment of freak out and I managed to pull it out straight away but it was like a oh fuck moment it was a real um, so I would say if you're going to, if you're going to explore with a butt plug, make sure it has a flared base. Mm-hmm. Um, this one actually had a little, it didn't have a flared base, but it had a little, um, area at the bottom where I, I should have threaded, uh, um, yeah. like a string, yeah. like you would with a jade egg mm-hmm. or a tampon. So just to be aware of that, like, mm. yes. Don't you hear these horror stories of people who end up going to hospitals with <laughs> all kinds of random objects oh, inside? Yeah. Um, don't don't be that person. I really had a moment where I was like, "Oh fuck, is this is this that moment for me?" So, <laughs> and luckily I was able to retrieve it instantly. Oh, but, thank God! Yeah, so flared bases are good. Yeah. yeah, and there's some really amazing, beautiful, beautiful products on the market. You know that are elegant, that look nice. That, yeah, there's and there's lots of fun ones as well. So mm, mm. you can have some fun with that. And and sometimes just wearing a butt plug while you're self pleasuring or while you're being penetrated can be a really good inroad to this to explore and just yeah to go at your own pace with and get to get to know a bit before you before you go that full step mm, yeah. yeah beautiful I um <laughs> I had Euphemia Russell on the podcast ages ago and and I mean they used to run butt plug dance parties which we chatted about a little bit but yeah their <laughs> TMI story was like oh my god it, it didn't have a flared enough base and it got stuck up there and they got it out but yeah definitely had that yeah. same moment of like oh for fuck's sake am I gonna be that person rocking up at the ER? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um yeah, so um I actually also I bought um so I, I'm I'm full disclosure, I'm quite inexperienced with with um anal sex and butt stuff. I only started kind of coming to the party, you know, in the last couple of years since I've had this um beautiful partner of mine who I feel really safe and secure with and and have been sort of curious to explore stuff but I think I've been so caught up in all all the other sort of sexuality work that I that like you said it was kind of like the last frontier it's like okay um and so you know I was like all right so I'm gonna get some butt plugs and like start you know just exploring this with myself and easing my way into it and I bought this like I think it was called a dilator set and on on the screen it looked you know the size of them looked pretty manageable and and there was five different sizes, slow like babushka dolls, but butt plugs. Um, and then they arrived <laughs> and I was like, dear God, it was a joke. Like they were fucking huge. I think the smallest one, I was like, okay, maybe. <laughs> and then the rest, they, I was like, what the hell? It's like a Coke can. Like, so I think I ended up giving the three <laughs> biggest ones to a friend of mine. And I don't know how he's going. I should ask him whether he's worked his way up to the largest one. <laughs> but I just, I just kept the smallest ones and I'm still working on the baby one. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, I just thought I'd share my own little PMI story. <laughs> hey, me again. If you'd like to support the potty and you've already given it five stars on whatever platform you're listening on, I want to mention that you can buy some really dope merch from the website and get yourself a labia lounge tote, tea, togs. Yep, you heard that right. I even have labia lounge bathers or a cute fanny pack if that would blow your hair back. So uh, if fashion isn't your passion, though, you can donate to my Buy Me A Coffee donation page, which is actually called Buy Me A Soy Chai Latte because... I'll be the first to admit, I'm a bit of a Melbourne cafe tosser like that. And yes, that is my coffee order. (laughs) You can do a once-off donation or an ongoing membership and sponsor me for as little as three fat ones a month. And I also have a Sunroom profile over on the Sunroom app, as I've mentioned. And I also offer one-on-one coaching and online courses that'll help you level up your sex life and relationship with yourself and others in a really big way. So every bit helps because it ain't cheap to put out a sweet podcast uh, into the world every week out of my own pocket. So I will be undyingly grateful if you support me and my biz financially in any of these ways. And if you like, I'll even give you a mental BJ with my mind from the lounge itself. Saucy. And, um, I'll pop the links in the show notes. Thank you. Later. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, and you sometimes you just don't know till these things arrive. Totally, what they're, what they're like. Yeah, and just like, oh my god, that's really intimidating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've definitely bought. Uh, I think it was the same. Actually, actually, in the same order, I bought like a a silicon dildo, which was oh, it was actually terrifyingly like skin coloured and veiny. Which you know, in hindsight, that lifelike vibe probably not for me. Um, and I had a suction base so you could like suction it onto stuff and then fuck it. But it was just so large, and I tried a couple of times, and then I was like, I'm just never going to use this. It actually is just not happening. So I ended up giving that to a friend as well, and I'm pretty sure yeah. she has it like stuck up on her wall with her necklaces hanging from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's a wrap, I think. That was fab. I'm so stoked to to have been able to ask you all the nitty-gritty questions about this this topic and I know other people will have been yeah, dying to ask similar questions. So, if I if I get anyone send any more questions in that I've missed because I feel like I've definitely missed a few things. Um, yeah, send them in to me and I can I can ask Mangala, I can do some research, I can maybe answer them from my own experience and we can post them in the Labia Lounge Facebook group. Uh, But thank you so much, Mangala. This has been really fun. Oh, it's been awesome. Thank you for having me back on again. (laughs) (laughs) Pleasure. All right, my love. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. And that's it, darling hearts. Thank you for stopping by the Labia Lounge. Your bum groove in the couch will be right where you left it, just waiting for you to sink back in for some more double L action next time. And in the meantime, if you'd be a dear and subscribe, share this episode, or leave a review on iTunes, then you can pat yourself on the snatch because that, my dear, is a downright act of sex-positive feminist activism. And you'd be supporting my vision to educate, empower, demystify, and destigmatize with this here podcast. Also, I'm always open to feedback, topic ideas that you'd love to hear covered, or guest suggestions. So feel free to get in touch via my website at freyograph.com or say hey over on Insta. My handle is Freya underscore graph underscore YMT and I seriously hope you're following me on there because damn, we have fun. We have fun. Anyway, later labial legends. I'll see you next time.